Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do Uncanny X-Men issue number 394 by Marvel Comics. Um, yeah, let's dive in. <laughs> um, so, I picked this comic because I wanted to do, yeah, do some kind of a one-shot. And to be honest, I'm not the biggest X-Men fan anymore. I was once upon a time, but then I just lose all interest. One of the reasons is... Uh, is what happens on the cover. Uh, I'm coming back a little bit later to that. So, um, The Penciler is one of my big-time favorites, Ian Churchill or Ian Churchill. Uh, he's did a lot of work in the past. Um, unfortunately, I'm not sure what he's doing now anymore. But, uh, yeah, his, his art is extremely detailed. There's a lot of things going on. Um, has an has his own style. Lots of cool backgrounds. I love it. Um, the inks is made by Mark Morales with Churchill, Ratmund, and T. Bear. So I think it's R. T. Bear, if I'm correctly. And this issue is also uh, a debut as um, for Joe Casey. He is the now on the issue. I believe the first. Uh, let me rephrase that. It's he's making his debut as a writer on Uncanny X Men. So I believe this is his first debut in this comic. Not entirely sure. So, what is this comic is all about? Well, there is a guy in, in in some kind of I don't know, punk rock uh, establishment bar, and uh, it seems that this young guy is now becoming eighteen, and he wants to celebrate in his own way, and he has some kind of special power, as you can see here. He can, you know, dissolve things or something, and he calls himself Warp Seventh or Savant, if you will. And then we switch to uh, Cyclops and, and, and are they calling her Jean Grey? Let me double check. Let me see. Jean Grey, also known as Phoenix. Okay. So there's, is she still Phoenix here? Okay. I can live with that. And, uh, and of course, there's some kind of, a, how do you say, propaganda, uh, television news, you know, about that the mutants are probably, you know, going to take over the world. And then there's a, you know... Uh, question uh, of time or um, that, that that there are in, you know, that are going to take over some, you know, scaring people. That's what the news is doing, you know, for views and clicks. Uh, you haven't seen it all before in a lot of X-Men or other comics that, you know, the media uses propaganda to fuel um, unrest, hate, uh, fear. You know what? Instead of, you know, bringing the news. Which is also some, you know, it's, it's news, but different. <laughs> so, Savant is going to a, uh, I don't know, as some kind of a military uh, place and, you know, screws things up. Uses his power to make uh, tanks disappear. And then we have a, some kind of a general or something. And he is being, you know, the, the uh, stereotypical uh, military guy. He says, what is your major malfunction? You genetic defective. Have you downsized, pulverized, and atomized? But then, you know, Seven uses his power and then he disappears as well. So, um, skipping a few pages. Um, X-Men, you know, uh, get a, um, a signal from Cerebro uh, because Cerebro picked up another mutant uh, near them. So they're going to fly there with, uh, I want to say Quinja, but that's not the case. Is this just the Blackbird? No, this is not the Blackbird either. Anyway, it's some kind of a flying vehicle. And uh, Seven is, you know, kicking ass. But then out of nowhere, X-Men uh, enters the fray. And um, Wolverine jumps out. And, you know, Seven uses his powers and poof, Wolverine's gone. So at first glance, I thought, you know, he's disintegrating them. But since his name is Warp Seven, so I believe he... Uh, well, at that time, I didn't know that, but... I looked up the name. <laughs> um, he just teleports things, objects, and even organic matter uh, to somewhere else. And now even Jean Grey is, poof, gone. But then um, skipping, well, not skipping, uh, the next page is that they are fleeing from, I don't know, military, but then demons and monsters and, and, and zombies. <laughs> And they don't know where they are, and, and Wolverine smells like this is a real place. So he uses his sen you know, his sentence now. What's the word? Census. That's the word. 
you know, to, to scan what's going on here, but he can figure it out. So, and um, basically also um, Phoenix using her TK, TK Blast to, to help Wolverine. So they're cutting up the place, but then out of nowhere, again, out of nowhere, uh, this beautiful looking page here of a shot of Angel coming in with some kind of a device. And um, I love the I love the look of, of Angel, you know, pure black, you know, in leather with, I don't know, maybe some silver lines, silver stuff on him with gold. And then his shaved blonde hair, blue skin, and then a little bit of a goatee. I think that's that's really cool. So uh, Cyclops still in the plane uh, says to uh, to Angel through the comms that um, a cerebro analysis suggested that uh, he has some kind of an um, extraction ability similar to teleportation. So uh, he figured out that Wolverine and, and Jean Grey are still are still alive, and um, it seems that that this device is some kind of a pulse. Um, weapon so angel uses on them that and I, I love it that he just flies here and there's basically nothing happening except that the clouds are moving away and then seven is getting hit by and yeah something invisible but he has a very visceral reaction to that i love that i love this this you know instead of a i don't, I don't know maybe a sound or a beam or a ray you know coming out no they use basically um well, actually nothing, but uh, Ian used the surroundings as a medium to, you know, show what's actually happening. You know, through the clouds, through this, his, his physical pain, and that he's, you know, falling and, and had also an impact on wherever they are now. And Gene figured it out that they are not some kind of, a, how do you say, um, another dimension. They are actually in his brain. Uh, because you figured it out that there's monsters in a sleeping room coming out of the from under the bed and out of the closet, and she thinks that um, you know they are monsters personified from Seven's mind, some kind of a um, I don't know trauma or something. Um, I love the part here. Uh, they figured out that Seven's range of power is very limited, so they are blasting him from afar with the pulse and with you know, uh, Cyclops eye beams. Also love that Cyclops is, you know, doing those, you know, um, not a straight beam, or more like a, um, how do you call these? Particle? Particle beams? No, it's also not particle beams. But you know what I mean. You know, just little shots instead of a normal beam, what he is doing in other comics, you know. Uh, I love this. This is a very uh, strategically. So, um, can I show this? Yes, so um, Angel uses the, the, the particle beam, well, not a particle beam, but the uh, EMP weapon uh, because it shuts down his physiologically and also renders his uh, mutant power inert somehow. I don't know who made that weapon, where did it come from, and how did they figure it out they needed it in this particular case? So I have no idea. And uh, so Cyclops, you know, lecturing him that he is not Magneto and you give the mutants a bad name and he just wanted to create chaos and uh he wants to know where his wife are and so gene figured it out that now that the world is collapsing around him they cannot survive there because there is some kind of a black hole some some total entropy around them uh so they she is feared that she is going to die but then you know being with wolverine what always happens between those two they kind of kiss and you know, and then basically she cheats on, on Cyclops, which she does a lot. And then she is disappearing uh, with Wolverine and coming back to the reality and they are all okay again. Well, somewhat. She is, you know, I don't know, uh, woozy. And and now Wolverine wants to take care of Savant and um, Cyclops wants him. You stand down, man, uh, Wolverine, I mean it. But then, you know, Wolverine sees what kind of a threat he is and wants to take him down and nobody can stop him. But then Seven activates his powers and turns on to himself and he is warping out of existence. And so I'm not sure he's dead because according to the internet, this is his first appearance, but only his only appearance. So I guess or he is dead or he is trapped in his own mind or maybe swallowed by the entropy in his mind. Not sure how it works, but, you know, he is gone. 
And then, um, well, the last page is that, um, you know, Cyclops is worried for uh, for Gene. And uh, Gene has a hard time remember what happened. But uh, Wolverine says, well, I remember Jeannie. Every bit of it. Another J on a job, huh? She says, right. And she just walks off. And then Wolverine looks very suspiciously to those two. And she he smells. Not sure why. Uh, but you know what? Hey, that brings us to the end of the video. Uh, I'm done with the whole Jean Grey Wolverine storyline. I mean, how long has it been going on? 30 years now? Maybe longer? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I'm done. And they're still doing it now in 2021. It's just bullshit. It, it's time to, you know, uh, stop Wolverine, you know, going after Gene. He needs to get a wife of his own or a girlfriend or whatever. Uh, stop doing this. I'm, I'm done with the whole trio thing. It, it goes on too long. You know what I actually like when uh, Gene Grey was actually gone and um, Scott Summer, a Cyclops, hooked up with uh, the White Queen, Emma Frost. Uh, for me, that was perfect because Emma Frost is such a totally different character than, you know, uh, Jean Grey. And uh, yeah, I, they broke up or something because he died and then he came back and he jumps exactly in the arms. Uh, I mean, uh, immediately in the arms of Jean Grey, who also came back. I don't know, man. It's a mess. Um, so this is a good issue. Uh, I have fun with it. And you know, like I said, Ian Churchill, big fan. The art says it. It's great stuff. A lot of... A lot of things going on, a lot of detail, small things in here, uh, great motion, great colors as well. Uh, I love it. Great part and great effects. So yeah, I give it a thumbs up and it brings me to the end of the video. Guys, thanks for watching. Hope you like it. Uh, if you like it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, like my video, share my video, and I see you next time.